Joining me now is one of the top welterweights on the Bellator roster, John Fitch, who's coming off a majority draw to Rory McDonald, the welterweight champion at Bellator 220. Thank you for the time, John. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Really good. It's uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, you know, I, I watched that fight with Rory uh, a few times now. I actually had you winning. Two of the judges had it as a draw, and one of the judges had you winning 48 to 46. So looking back on it now, how, how did you score the fight? I I thought I uh, I think I won every after after watching it by a few times. Like so, after right after the fight, I thought I won three three rounds of two easy. And then I watched it back once again. I thought I won, you know, four four rounds to one. <clears throat> then, you know, third time I watched through. Um, I, even the fourth round, I feel like at best was a draw. I think I, I kind of won all five rounds. Uh, it's it's yeah, really frustrating. Now I, I believe you said after the fight that you didn't think Rory uh, hits very hard. Uh, do you still feel that way? Uh, like in comparing to other welterweights that you fought, uh, do you feel like he's a little bit easier of a fight for you? Um, well, I mean, I don't, I don't ever really mean remember being hit hard in a fight. Uh, the probably only time I was hit hard in a fight was the was the Hendrix fight, but I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy's got such hammers in, in his fists. But I, uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it's that guys don't hit that hard or I just have that hard of a head or what. <laughs> Either way, it's probably a little bit of both. A little bit uh, of both. Yeah. You know, I I gotta ask too because you know it, since you didn't lose the fight, I feel it's kind of unfair that. You know, you're eliminated, and Rory has moved on, and now he's in the, the Grand Prix finale. Does that kind of leave you with a little bit of a bitter taste in your mouth? Because you didn't lose the fight. No, I mean, life's not fair. Stuff happens. Uh, you know, if I would have finished him, I wouldn't have to worry about it. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you know, I fought hard. I'm happy with how I performed. Um if, if something happens and he can't continue on in the finals, you know, give me a call. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Hopefully they'll, they'll let me maybe get a rematch uh, if he wins the tournament. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, I'm not letting it bother me too much. Yeah. So wouldn't it make sense that you should be the alternate if Rory or Lima gets uh, injured and can't fight? You should be the guy to step in, right? Yeah. I don't know if they're going to want me to, to be ready or whatever. Uh yeah, you know, because I've kind of still been on the fence about whether or not I was going to retire or not. But, you know, I haven't heard anything from them. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on, you know, I spent last month moving. This month I'm, I'm uh, going to try to do some rehab and, and just get my body strong and feel good again. And then, and then you know, we'll see uh, September, you know, how I feel about, you know, training again. And, you know, that's the question that, that I myself want to know the most, and I'm sure all the other fans out there want to know. Which way are you leaning more? Do you feel like you still have more fight in you, or do you feel like, you know what, I've done enough in my career, uh, I, I would be okay with retiring right now? It's a little bit of both, but, I mean, I kind of I kind of like it. I kind of miss it. So um, I think a lot of it has to just uh, depend on how my body feels going into a training camp. Like, I'm I'm tired of going into training camps kind of feeling broken. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if I can get some things kind of straightened out or feeling better, then, uh, you know, there's still a desire. Sure, sure. Now, uh, I'm sure you've heard uh, Rory's post-fight interview. It was very interesting. I'd just like to get your thoughts. I mean, do you feel like when you hear a fighter uh, who's done as much as Rory has say what he did after a fight, did does that kind of lead you to believe that maybe he's he's close to being done, like he just doesn't have it in him anymore? No, I just have that effect on people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you're one of the hardest guys to fight. I mean, you just have I a just, very grinding style. I just I make you question your existence <laughs> and what your purpose in life. It's just something that happens. You know, it's funny you say that because I was watching the Colby Covington Robbie Lawler fight last night, and. It kind of reminded me a little bit of you, man. Like, you know, Colby has that just relentless style where he just will not let go. He just after you all for it doesn't matter if it goes 25 minutes. He just keeps up that pace. Do you see a little bit of uh, yourself in Colby? I, I wasn't able to see the fight last night. and I've, I've actually haven't seen Colby fight. Um, I, don't, I don't get a chance to watch as many uh, UFCs. You know, everything's behind a paywall these days. And uh, I keep pretty busy. So I don't, I don't get a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to watch too many fights. But I'm sure you're watching uh, the, the Bellator fights. What was your thoughts on Rory? Yeah, I have the, uh, I've got the DAZN app, so I'm able to, to keep up on, on a number of the fights. 
So did you feel like Rory uh, put on a good performance against Neiman Gracie? Were you impressed? Yeah, I think he did good. Neiman's tough. Um, but, uh, yeah, he came out, dominated him, uh, handled him pretty well. I know you've uh, you've made no uh, you've been very clear that you would love to fight Neiman Gracie. How do you think that fight would end if you did fight him? Uh, no, I think it'd be a good fight. You know, good stylistic battle with with grappling. But you know, I don't think he'd be able to take down and and uh, you know, I'd be able to pick at him from a, a number of different angles. And obviously, uh, Rory McDonald, Douglas Lima is the welterweight Grand Prix finale. What's your prediction there? If both of them are, both of them are healthy and the fight comes to fruition, well, I, I hope you know Rory comes out and, and wins in you know dominant fashion, and then I can I can get a, a rematch here here maybe before the end of the year or sometime early next year. And, and so you said you know one of the biggest things is making sure that you're healthy and everything. You know, as you're in your early 40s now, like. How do you feel day to day? Is it a big difference from when you were, you know, say in your early 30s? I'm sure it is a little bit, right? Uh, you know, I think things just stay injured longer when you have them, and then and things build up over time. So, uh, you know, it's it's not too bad, but you know, I just have certain things that you know uh, make it makes it difficult to go through a training camp. Mm -hmm. My day to day is fine, <clears throat> but you know, your day to day is much different than you know three, four hard sessions a day for you know eight to 12 weeks it's a it's a it's a big difference what are some of the things you're doing now to to really rejuvenate your body get you back to 100 percent uh that maybe you weren't doing when you were a little last young? month was moving <laughs> last, like yeah yeah the last well yeah since since the fights in new york for the Bellator fights in new york it's been acquiring the house and and, and moving so that's mostly what, what i've been doing building some stuff in the garage so that's my physical routine right now but this month, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get into some uh, uh, some yoga, and then uh, I, I I was with Kyle Kingsbury this past weekend, so he uh, gave me some contact for some guys who do some some mobility type training and and get people's bodies back in line in Santa Cruz. So I'll probably try to link up with them sometime and just see see what I can do, so I can see if I can get my elbows straightened out or not. You know, I can't I can't straighten my elbow anymore. I've lost, I lost, uh, I think, an inch in my reach because when they measure you from, from fingertip to fingertip. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's got to be uh, quite a, a weird thing to try and process uh, with everything that you've been through. I mean, your body has been your temple throughout your, your whole career, and, and, and here you are as you're getting towards the end of it. I, I'm curious what you think of the, um, the sauna and the benefits of the sauna because I myself, I love the sauna. I feel like it's one of those things that really can kind of bring you back to feeling close to 100%. Is that something you do on a regular basis? Not, not as much as I should. I tend to I tend to save a lot of the sauna time uh, for for when I'm cutting my weight, mm -hmm. but I, I do have a little personal portable sauna, and I uh, I need to I need to make myself you know get myself in there and, and warm up at least with it uh, a little bit more. Um, I think I'll get it set up in my garage once once I get everything else going. Nice, and and so the new move is is great. You feeling more comfortable in your your new place? Yeah, it's nice to have your own place and and uh, and actually owning it, putting in some equity into it instead of just paying rent. Yeah, yeah. Because I I, we, I sold a house <clears throat> like last year, and the, the the market was up too high to to turn the money over into a new property. So I went and stayed in an apartment for a year, and it's uh it's been a long time since I stayed in an apartment. It, yeah, I I, uh, I won't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Well, congratulations on the move. Uh, seems like you're much happier now. That's that's huge as you move forward. You know, this might be a tough question for you to answer because it, it's you here. Uh, but, you know, when your career is all said and done, whenever you do retire, what do you think your legacy is going to be? Do you feel like you're a, a clear cut top 10 welterweight of all time? Uh, I mean, I, I would think. I think I'm up there somewhere. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's up for other people to decide, I guess. I just, I just put in my best effort and did what I could. I've been doing it for a long time. Um, maybe, keep, maybe keep doing it. I don't know quite yet. We'll see. Yeah. Well, for, for what it's worth, I've, I definitely believe that you're in the top 10, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, your career has been uh, a stretch for quite some time now. You've got a phenomenal record, a lot of key wins over, over big time names. So uh, for what it's worth, that's that's what I think. You know, it's interesting. You have a really uh, unique YouTube presence. I, I've been following you, uh, johnfitch.net uh, on Twitter and official John Fitch on uh, YouTube. And you have these uh, shake break uh, segments that you do. Can, can you just elaborate on how that all came about and uh, how long you've been doing it now? 
Um, yeah, so I just wanted to start uh, utilizing the, the time that I was having one of my meals, which is a shake, and, uh, and, and, and start doing some more, uh, reaching out, just talking to people and, um, you know, doing live streams and start doing that every day. <clears throat> Done them for about a little over a year. Got a pretty good crew of people that come in and talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of young men who haven't had male uh, role models or masculine influence at all. So I try to you know provide my best effort at, at, at a little bit of guidance. Some of the guys ask questions. They got people range from 19, like 30 years old in there sometimes, asking simple questions that I wish I would have been able to ask when I was their age. So uh, I answer pretty much every question that comes through during during the live stream. So we get a lot of stuff talked about. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. I've been watching a few of them. Uh, one of the ones that, that I really found interesting, I believe it was number 320, was Is Time Even Real? Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I don't want to get too like deep or philosophical or anything like that. But, you know, last year I lost my father and my father was my best friend. And I've been, I guess, struggling with time and just trying to figure out what mm -hmm. does this life mean? And, you know, I, I found a lot of things that you were saying interesting because for the longest time, I, I focused on certain goals, and if I didn't achieve them by a specific age, I felt like maybe maybe I'm I'm failing at life. Uh, and so I just thought it was really interesting to hear what you're saying, and I agree with uh, that. In my in my book, I have, uh, I wrote a, a book, Failing Upward Death by Ego. Uh, it's on Amazon, but it, it covers my journals from early in my fight career, and that was a big theme when I was around like 25, 26. I had a birthday coming up, and I was freaking out, like you know, I didn't. I didn't have kids or wife or house, whatever. I was a loser. I, I was a failure. If I didn't, if I didn't make something of myself by 30, I was being so like hard about it. It's just, it's ridiculous um, to put that type of pressure on yourself. Um, you don't, you don't even need to. I mean, your 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 teens are for for learning and picking a, a direction. Get your 20s to hustle and focus on that 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 uh, that endpoint. That should be your your total energy output. Should be towards your your goal, uh, whatever your mission is. And then when you start hitting your 30s, that's when you start you start looking, you know, to uh, to maybe get the girls or whatever. Like I think a lot of guys, a lot of young men are, are putting the pressure on themselves to get established way too fucking soon. You don't you don't know what the hell you're doing. Trust me, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing until I was like 35, and then. And then that's when I thought I started figuring things out, and then everything fell apart at like you know 38 or 40. <laughs> so, they, yeah, you got a long time until you, you you start figuring shit out. So, what would you say to someone that feels like they have a direction in their 20s, uh, yeah. and they learn in their early 30s that maybe that's not the direction of their future, and they need to figure something else out? Well, what's the best advice you could give to someone that has to basically press the reset button? Well, you you need to be. This is something that was really hard for me to uh, figure out was being. Uh, outcome independent, right? So you be, be able to put yourself 100% into what your goal or your mission is. But if you don't, if you don't get it, or if you realize, well, this isn't it, be okay with, with changing gears and uh, pick a new mission, pick a new path, and then just you start for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've got to be able to let go <laughs> sometimes. Sure. It's, it's hard to do sometimes, but the, it really the, is. It really yeah. is. You know, yeah. yeah. I'm recently, you know, I'm going through a divorce right now, and it's it's extremely hard to to let go and forgive. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's one of the hardest things ever. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't been through a divorce. Uh, the, I guess the the hardest thing I've gone through was was last year losing my old man, and and that yeah. was something yeah. that you know I, I'm still struggling with day to day. I, I tell my girlfriend, I tell my friends, you know, just give me time. You know, it's I'm not always going to be my best day to day, but I'm just trying to do the best that I can to to move forward and, and to and to be the best version of myself. Uh, you know, John, again, uh, anyone that's that's out there watching this, make sure to follow John on Twitter, johnfitch.net, YouTube, official John Fitch. Uh, always a pleasure uh, to have you join me. This is the third time, I believe, now. Uh, and I really hope that uh, we do see you back in the cage again soon because uh, you did not lose that fight against Rory. And <laughs> i to see the rematch, man, because uh, I think you still got uh, plenty of juice left. Thanks, man.